Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics and uh, refineries deep behind Russia's borders were on fire earlier this week. And Putin, who thought he was building a war machine to take over Eastern Europe, finds that he cannot even deal with drones sent by the country he thought he'd roll over in three days. And in amongst all of this, President Macron of France has been attempting to shift the dial in terms of attitudes towards Russia in Europe including his own. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel. So uh, people sometimes ask me if I'm going to, when I'm going to do another video discussing Ukraine more, I do point out the channel is for political commentary, of course, with a particular focus on UK politics. What happens in Ukraine is, of course, pertinent to the UK, but it has been for a while a largely military operation, you know, with not much of a political dimension of late. As such, although I still follow the events with interest myself, hasn't really featured on the channel. And the same applies with anything happening where the politics hasn't fundamentally changed. I basically said what I needed to say. Only for Ukraine it has now, or it's about to. President Macron of France is pushing for a, a fundamental change of attitude politically. And I support the effort. Despite the ongoing craziness in British political life, we are heading into a very uncertain year for the future security of Europe. Putin's allies are everywhere. He has influential support supporters in the British Parliament and the media. They can't openly say so these days, but anyone in this country who is enthusiastically backing Trump, who himself explicitly backs Putin, is basically revealing their allegiance clearly enough. But more importantly, Putin also has influential supporters in the American Congress and media, and they are happy to be pretty open about it. Those forces may well be in charge of the White House again by the end of next January. It's a terrifying thought and one that Europe needs to take seriously. It's easy enough for countries like Poland to take the threat of American support disappearing overnight seriously, less so for more Western European powers who think they've got a good few countries buffer between them. You know, they've become accustomed to the peace which the project, which ultimately became the EU, gave them. But as, as they say, the price for peace is eternal vigilance, and we have not been very vigilant at all. There's been a lot of appeasement of Putin, which was deeply unwise, as well as immoral, but mostly when it comes to politics, deeply unwise, but failing to deal with the initial invasion of Ukraine must rank as the dumbest thing that Western powers have done for decades. I mean, look what we did. We allowed a small band to just march into Ukraine, uh, to, uh, to the Crimea, and take it. And, um, and then when they started massing hardware at the border of Ukraine to sweep across the entire country, we just looked at it and went, we think, we think they're going to invade, you know. No, they're not going to invade. I think they're going to invade. Should we do something about it? No, they're probably not. Oh, look, they've invaded. But we are where we are, bogged down in a quagmire of an invasion. Russia thinks it can win a war of attrition. Its entire economy is on a war footing. They've ramped up the production of military hardware. They think they can outlast Western resolve. They think they just need to wait for major Western governments to get bored of the war and then tell Ukraine to come to a deal with Russia, which involves ceding a big chunk of its territory. It's very much part of the Russian ruling class's psyche that the West are decadent and soft, a hangover from, you know, Soviet Union days, you know, that we lack the stomach for a protracted war, which makes a mess of our trade. It's this attitude that has led to where we are today. And it's an attitude which can only be shattered by making it undeniably clear that it is not true. The problem is it might be true. So Putin thinks he can hold out until Western governments get sick of it all, urge Ukraine to carve up their own country in the interests of peace, and what they really mean is the interests of their own economies. Then Putin will claim victory, lick his wounds, try to build some tanks that are tractor-proof, and then relaunch his invasion against the rest when he's better prepared. Or his successor can do so if he doesn't last that long. As sure as night follows day, there is no security for Europe unless this invasion is reversed in its entirety and until defences are built up which reflect the reality that in the here and now, Russia wants to invade Europe. Work on a long-term peace with, with Russia, of course. We don't want to be in a constant state of antagonism, 
But right now, we are at war with a country that has a shit economy but wants to rule the world. Russia has no borders. That is what the Russian government is officially saying. And Macron's been stepping up now. He's recently been given increasingly explicit statements about much stronger support for Ukraine to the annoyance of some, but they need to listen. He's been making it clear that he wishes friendship with the people of Russia, but that Putin must be stopped. He's made it explicitly clear that support for Ukraine is not just ending hostilities, but returning all of their territory, including Crimea, he said. But he has also reflected a changing reality. Macron has, in the past, tried to reason with Putin. He now understands that this is impossible. He also spoke this week of helping Ukraine to resist, but this is no longer enough. He laid out exactly what is at stake, not just for Ukraine, but for Europe, for France itself, if Putin is allowed to win. Ukraine has sought to recapture public attention again with some devastating strikes against military targets in Russia itself. Some of the targets are reportedly beyond even Moscow. The Russian military seems powerless to stop this. They may well have shot down the drones which took part in the attacks. That doesn't seem to be clear. But they could not stop them carrying out their attacks or refineries first. And drones are ultimately designed to be disposable assets. The UK is promising to build and supply more, and there will be supplies from other allies as well. If Russia cannot intercept them before they carry out strikes on such important targets with their current defences, they're going to have to beef up defences inside Russia itself. This means having to divert resources away from the front lines in Ukraine. Simple enough military strategy. It is so simple that I learned it playing RTS games as a kid. If your enemy feels secure at home, they will commit more resources to the attack. If they feel vulnerable to either their base or their supply lines, then they won't. Security of your own land and supply lines has to be the priority. So to try to reduce the size of the Russian invasion force, you need to threaten targets within Russia itself and force a redeployment. Be interested to see what happens if these attacks can continue and Russia are unable to deal without them, with them without that major redeployment. But while all of this is going on, there's also been a change of attitude from Europe. Macron, as I say, is changing his perceptions of the situation. According to someone who knows French politics, Macron has been, in his words, mugged by reality. His behaviour, um, you know, has, has not tied in with his preconceptions. So like anyone with critical thinking skills, he's gone, right, I need to reevaluate my conceptions here. Macron has talked about having troops openly on the ground in Ukraine. Germany's Schultz did not seem impressed with the public comments, but Macron will be conscious of the threat to Trump returning to power. I do not think Europe can afford to wait to see if it happens, because if it does happen, what are they going to have? Two months warning? Not enough to massively reorganise European defences. And as for Schultz, I would say Germany does need to shake itself a bit here. Under a different Chancellor, sure, they trusted Putin a bit too much. They have suffered more than most in Western Europe from being too reliant on Russian fuel. Nordstrom too, not a great move, and it has shafted them. You would think Germany, above everyone, would see the dangers of thinking that this all ends by essentially doing nothing. Frankly, the biggest advantage Europe has here is that Russia is incredibly incompetently run. It is a kleptocracy that has, uh, you know, that... It means you don't have experts in charge of anything over there. Mob bosses who don't understand the industries they nicked are running it all. Russia has weaknesses which they are unable or unwilling to overcome. Europe has weaknesses too. It's too reliant on the US who cannot be viewed as a reliable partner for at least another seven months. And it is looking for the quick fix, the path of least resistance. But allowing the takeover of Crimea, which would have been really easy to deal with, was taking the path of least resistance, letting them murder people on NATO soil via the Salisbury poisonings and then letting them host the Football World Cup anyway was the path of least resistance. Didn't work out well. We're paying the price in human lives as well as economically. The UK government really should be working with Macron to amplify his message and persuade others around Europe of the need to reevaluate the endgame here. I know in the Conservative Party there are those who are back in Putin. Some of them have been none too subtle about it but we, we know they've been heavily funded. But there are also people within the Conservative Party who are conscious of the threat to European security and care about it. And I do think they need to urge Sunak and Shaps to actually 
say, we need to work with Macron on this one. But there we are. Those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, the join button for memberships. And until next time, I'll see you later.